Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing Parkinson's disease and anti-Parkinson drugs. Okay, right, so we're in the process of discussing the anatomy of the basal ganglia. So far we've seen the substantia nigra pars compacta, now we're about to see the other area of the substantia nigra, which is the substantia nigra pars reticulata, which is the more lateral area of the substantia nigra, shown here in yellow. Right, so, the substantia nigra pars reticulata for short is going to be abbreviated down to the SN for substantia nigra and then PR for pars reticulata. Okay, right, now, this area is going to have an extremely different function to the substantia nigra pars compacta. The substantia nigra pars compacta releases dopamine. Okay, the neurons of the substantia nigra pars compacta use dopamine as their neurotransmitter. The neurons of the substantia nigra pars reticulata are going to use the inhibitory neurotransmitter GABA as their neurotransmitter. Okay, so gamma aminobutyric acid. Okay, and we will come back to the functions of these two areas later on. Okay, but for now, just know that they are part of the basal ganglia, so they're part of this system that's going to be affected by Parkinson's disease and which is going to cause the hypokinesia. Okay, right. So, uh, let's move on. Let's have a look at another portion of the basal ganglia. So, the next portion of the basal ganglia that I want to talk about is an area known as the subthalamic nucleus. Okay, and the subthalamic nucleus uh, is going to be located underneath the thalami, which we've um, talked about previously. Okay, so the subthalamic nucleus, and of course you're going to have two of them, the left subthalamic nucleus and the right subthalamic nucleus, uh, they are abbreviated down to STN for short. Okay, now where are they going to be located? Well, to show where they're going to be located, I need to show the midbrain again, so I'll draw out the midbrain again. Okay, so here is the midbrain, here are the superior colliculi at the back here, and then here is the cerebral peduncle shown on this uh, right-hand side here. Okay, and we've discussed that the substantia nigra is in these appendages at the front here. Okay, right. Now, the subthalamic nucleus, then, is going to be on top of the midbrain, but underneath the thalami, which are going to be on top of the midbrain. Okay? And the subthalamic nucleus is going to be a small almond-shaped nucleus that sits on top of the substantia nigra here, but underneath the thalami. So the thalami are going to be located on top, uh, still, on top of the subthalamic nucleus and on top of the midbrain. Okay, right. So in red here, here is our left subthalamic nucleus, and here is our right subthalamic nucleus. Okay, and together they are the subthalamic nuclei. Okay, right. So on top of the midbrain, specifically on top of the substantia nigra of the midbrain, you have the subthalamic nuclei. Okay, then located on top of the subthalamic nuclei, which are themselves on top of the uh, midbrain, we're going to have the thalami. Okay, so I'm going to now show you this picture where we're looking from above and we're seeing the thalami. Okay, so here is the left thalamus shown here. Okay, and here is the right thalamus shown here. Okay, so let's colour these in. So, uh, we showed the thalami previously in turquoise, but previously we could only see the left thalamus. We couldn't see both of the thalami. Okay, now, looking from above, we can see both thalami. Okay, so in turquoise, here is one of the thalami, here's the left thalamus specifically, and this other one here that I'm now colouring in is the right thalamus. Okay, and they're sitting on top of the midbrain and also on top of the subthalamic nuclei. So the subthalamic nuclei are in between the substantia nigra below and the thalamus above. Okay, right. Now, uh, the other thing that I'd like to mention whilst we've got this picture here is... Um, the third ventricle. Okay, so if I put the cerebral aqueduct here, which remember was this tube that ran through the midbrain and was full of cerebrospinal fluid, this is going to be in continuum with the third ventricle. So where is the third ventricle? Well, the third ventricle is this space in between the two thalami here. So in between the left thalamus and the right thalamus, we have this space here. Okay, and this space is going to be full of cerebrospinal fluid. And this is the third ventricle. 
Okay, now, it's bounded then below by the midbrain here, okay? It's bounded on the sides by the phalami. Okay, we'll talk about what happens at the front later on, but I'll just mention now what happens at the back. Okay, so at the back you have a structure known as the pineal gland, okay? It's not part of the basal ganglia, but just for a bit of background neuroanatomy, there uh, is the pineal gland here. Okay, right. So moving on with the basal ganglia then. Okay, so we've now seen three separate basal ganglia nuclei. We've seen the substantia nigra pars compacta, we've seen the substantia nigra pars reticulata, and we've seen the subthalamic nucleus. However, there are more. Okay, so now what we're going to have to do is extend this picture out to show some of the other nuclei of the basal ganglia. Okay, so the next nucleus I want to talk about is the uh, globus pallidus, which is separated into two separate portions which are going to have very different functions. Okay, now, where is this going to be located? Well, going from this picture here, okay, it's going to be located in front of the thalamus as far as this picture here is concerned. Okay, so when you look at it from the sides, we'd see it in front of the thalamus. So it's sitting beside the thalamus. Okay, so it's probably going to be good to show it on this picture here, okay, where we're looking from above because then we can see uh, these things sitting alongside the thalami. Okay, so, it is going to be a bilateral structure, so you're going to have it on both sides. However, since I've put words in the position where I would want to draw it on the right side, I'm only going to show it on the left-hand side, but it is a bilateral structure, so you have two of them. You have the left uh, one and the right one as well. Okay, so, the globus pallidus then is part of a bigger structure known as the lenticular nucleus. Okay, so this structure that I'm showing here, this is what's known as the lenticular nucleus, and I wish I had a bigger space to draw this in, uh, but never mind. Okay, now, the lenticular nucleus is made up of two main portions. Okay, the outer portion of the lenticular nucleus here, which I'll colour in orange. Oh, and by the way, the reason it's called the lenticular nucleus is because it looks like a lens. Okay, this outer portion in orange, and I'll put the labels over here to try and um, free up some space, this is known as the cutamen. Okay, so that's the outermost portion of the lenticular nucleus. That's more lateral, facing out, further away from the midline than the thalami. Okay, and then this internal portion here is known as the globus pallidus. Okay, however, the globus pallidus is going to be divided into two portions, okay? So we're going to have the internal globus pallidus, which is this portion that is closer to the midline here, which I'm now colouring in in vivid purple, okay? And that's going to be called uh, the GPI for short. So this stands for globus pallidus internal portion, okay? So this I here means the internal portion, okay? And you would call it the internal globus pallidus. So this is going to be the internal globus pallidus, okay, and I'll underline that in vivid purple here, okay, right, now the other portion of the globus pallidus, this is more external and is closer to the putamen there, which I'll colour in in green, that's going to be the external globus pallidus, and for short we will abbreviate the external globus pallidus to GPE for external globus pallidus. Okay, right. So these abbreviations are going to save us a lot of effort later on when we're showing all of the uh, circuitry of the basal ganglia. Okay, so all three of these structures that we have just shown, the putamen, the globus pallidus internal and the globus pallidus external, or the internal globus pallidus and the external globus pallidus, they are all part of the basal ganglia. Okay, so we're building up the collections of nuclei which are going to be involved in the basal ganglia. We've seen the two substantia nigra portions, we've seen the subthalamic nucleus, and now we've seen these three structures of the lenticular nucleus. Okay, right. Now, to go further, we need to show the chordate nucleus so that we can complete the concept of the striatum. Okay, because the concept of the striatum is going to be extremely important 
to the basal ganglia. I mean, you can't do anything without knowing what the striatum is, okay? Uh, now, the putamen is going to be one part of the striatum. However, there is another part that is a lot more difficult to show, which is the chordate nucleus, okay? And we can't really show it on this picture here, although I will have a go later on. But it's not ideal to show it first on this picture here. The way to show it best first is to look again from the side. Okay, so we will go back to looking at this picture from the left-hand side. Okay, now we need some more paper then. Okay, so let's now see the uh, striatum by looking from the side. So, let's firstly draw out the things that we have seen so far, and then I will add on this new structure that we have not yet seen. So firstly, I'll start by drawing the thalamus. Okay, so this is the left thalamus viewed from the side. Okay, now, sitting in front of the left thalamus, we now have the putamen. Okay, now we can't see the internal and external globus pallidus is because those are behind the putamen, okay? The putamen is the most external structure, so that's what we're going to see. So this structure here in orange, this is the putamen here, and then peeping out from either side, we've got the bits of the thalamus. Okay, so let me just label this up. So this here, this is the putamen. Now, what I want to then show is the chordate nucleus. Okay, so the chordate nucleus has a rather fantastic shape. It loops round in this incredible way here, and I've just put that label of putamen exactly where I want to show the chordate nucleus. Never mind, the label's going to have to be destroyed. Okay, so here then, this is the chordate nucleus looping round in this incredible way, like so. Okay, so I will colour in the chordate nucleus in vivid purple to make it look impressive. Okay, so it loops round in this incredible way, and that's why it was better to show the chordate nucleus from this left-hand view than from above, because when you look from above, all you're going to see is the top of this. You're not going to see it looping round in this incredible way. But I will try and show it from above in a moment when we go back to that other picture. Okay, so that's all the chordate nucleus. Now, um, the chordate nucleus and the putamen together, they are the main two portions of the striatum. However, there is one more main portion of the striatum which I feel obliged to include, okay, not least because uh, there looks to be this hole here without it. Okay, so this little area here where there is a sort of gap which doesn't look right, okay, this is the final portion of the striatum which I'll colour in in green here, or at least the final non-trivial portion of the striatum, okay? Um, and this is the nucleus accumbens. Now, this is terrifically important if you're discussing schizophrenia or if you're discussing drug addiction or motivated behaviour, okay? But in Parkinson's disease, it's not going to be terribly important that we discuss the nucleus accumbens, but I'll put it there uh, just for completion of the striatum. And it's often abbreviated as the NAC, but we're not going to see it again in this video. Okay, right. So, the striatum then. The striatum means all three of these structures, the putamen, the nucleus accumbens, and the chordate nucleus. And that's also sometimes called the corpus striatum, if someone's being very uh, proper. Okay, now... There are more useful terms that are going to be useful to us in um, talking about the basal ganglia, okay? Uh, so one of the terms that's going to be useful to us is the chordate putamen, okay? Which means the chordate and the putamen together, okay, without the nucleus accumbens, because these two portions are going to be extremely important in the basal ganglia, and indeed they're part of the basal ganglia, whereas the nucleus accumbens isn't part of the basal ganglia. Okay, so this refers to just the chordate and the putamen together. Now, there's another term that people use probably more commonly than the chordate putamen, and this other term is to call them together the dorsal striatum. Okay, so the putamen and the chordate together are known as the dorsal striatum, and the nucleus accumbens is often called the ventral striatum. Okay, so we will use this terminology, the dorsal striatum, to mean the chordate and the putamen together without the nucleus accumbens. If you just put the striatum, uh, you really, strictly speaking, mean the chordate 
nucleus, the putamen, and the nucleus accumbens. So we will use dorsal striatum. Okay, right. So the dorsal striatum is part of the basal ganglia then. And we've now completed all of the portions of the basal ganglia. Okay, the dorsal striatum, which is the caudate and the putamen, the internal and external globus pallidus is, okay, the substantia nigra pars compacta, the substantia nigra pars reticulata, and then also the subthalamic nuclei. They together are the basal ganglia. Okay, right. Now, before we then go on to the function of the basal ganglia and see how this is going to be involved in uh, the voluntary initiation of movement, um, we need to discuss one more anatomical structure, okay, which is this dopaminergic projection from the substantia nigra pars compacta to the dorsal striatum, and this is where these dopaminergic neurons are going to be coming. They're going to be coming to the caudate nucleus and the putamen here. Okay, so I want to discuss the pathway by which the dopaminergic neurons in the substantia nigra pars compacta are actually going to send their axons into the caudate putamen here. Okay, and this is what's known as the nigrostriatal pathway, okay, because it's going from the substantia nigra pars compacta and it's coming to the dorsal striatum, so the nigrostriatal pathway is what it's called. Okay, right. So firstly, let's discuss this neurotransmitter that the nigrostriatal pathway is going to be releasing firstly. Okay, let's discuss dopamine in a bit more detail because we haven't discussed dopamine uh, before now. Okay, so dopamine then. So uh, dopamine structure firstly. You have an amine group in dopamine, hence its name dopamine. Okay, then you also have, following the uh, amine group, an ethylene group, okay, which consists of two methylene groups. So here's the first methylene group, and then here's the second methylene group. Okay, and then also in dopamine, what you have is a catechol ring. Okay, right, and we'll stop this video here and continue this video in the next, this discussion in the next video.